Close game to Houston, 66-61. UCF lost on the road at SMU. Knights control the opening tip. They've been great at home, 6-1 and one this year. Last time they took the floor was against Michigan. Their best victory of the year came just before the turn of the calendar. Knights control the opening tip. Temple, a terrific defensive team, among the best in the conference. Brandon Mahan off the back rim, and it's pulled down by Damian Dunn. These teams prefer to play at decidedly different paces. UCF wants to get up and down. Temple wants to play in a half-court, grinded-out kind of game. Yeah, they absolutely like to grind it out. They like to drive and kick. Look a lot for their guards right there. Driving and kicking uh, for the open shot in the lane. Friendly bounce for Nick Jordan. Opening bucket to Temple. Four freshman starters for the Owls. This is one of the youngest teams in the country, and they are without their head coach tonight. Aaron McKee in his third year. Long NBA career for McKee. Very well respected, uh, both for what he's done on the bench as a coach and also as a player. He is out due to COVID protocol, so Monte Ross, who is in his third year as an assistant, has the reins for the Owls tonight. So neither one of those last possessions for UCF worked out in a score, but I do like what I'm seeing. They're getting the ball into Mbake Jam, and they're, I think getting post touches early for this team will open it up for their great shooters on the outside. Some token pressure from UCF, and Temple starts their offense with 15 on the shot clock. Jordan gets inside. Dunn up and around Walker. And a whistle and a foul will put Jordan on the line. Yeah, this is a battle to look out for. Um, Bakke versus Jordan. Jordan doesn't have quite have the size of some of the UCF bigs, but he is somebody who battles, especially on the offensive glass. He's looking for putbacks. So he's a guy to look out for, for sure. Jordan came off the bench early in the season. He started the last three games, and his scoring is up significantly. And again, one of four freshmen in the starting lineup. Not all true freshmen. Some that played last year during the COVID year. Yeah, second year freshman is a uh, term that we're going to have to get used to a little bit. Jordan's got all four for Temple. Darius Perry, UCF's leading scorer, did not score the last time these teams met three weeks ago up in Philly. Yeah, had a real struggle in that game, wound up fouling out. Did have a, a, a good number of assists in that game, so he was trying to distribute the basketball, but certainly wants to get going early for UCF. Perry with two on the clock. Jaleel White played outstanding individual defense. Temple locked in at that end of the floor in the opening couple minutes. Jordan feeling it. Short with the three. Mahan tracks it down. Walker one on one with Jordan. Faces him up. The jumper is short. Stays with it. The rebound and the stick back for CJ Walker. Really good extra effort there by CJ Walker. He is a guy that is extremely athletic. He's somebody who's always going to be crashing the offensive boards and um, making some great contributions on the defensive end as well. He's one of the best shot blockers, individual defensive players in the Americans. Only six points in the last two games for Walker. He had been so consistent offensively for this team as a second and third scorer. And he makes the most of his first opportunity, and UCF forces a turnover. See C.J. Walker here taking his time, sees the opening for the jump shot, knows he's going to miss it, gets that extra effort, puts it in. Here's an example of what Johnny Dawkins has talked about with Walker, just much more comfortable at the offensive end of the floor this season. Yeah, I think he's really accepted his role on this team. He understands where he needs to be on the court, especially on the offensive end. He's already got the defense covered, so this year he's really seen some great, uh, great progress on the offensive end as Darren Green makes that jumper. High degree of difficulty on that shot by Darren Green, but we see him make those night in and night out. Bakke Jong comes out hard on that screen. 
One on one in the post with Arashma Parks. White top of the key, short on the three. Temple is not a good three-point shooting team, but they are a great offensive rebounding team. Jordan from the wing. All the three-point attempts for Temple have been short. Green, rhythm three. Off the side of the rim and knocked out. Powers his assistance to handle things. Normally, Monte Ross handles all of the defensive responsibilities, so didn't feel like there'd be much different about the game. Yeah, watching the shoot around today, it felt like it was running smooth. It was probably running, uh, you know, this, a similar way with certain coaches handling the defense, certain coaches handling the offense, similar way than what they do shoot arounds in the past. So if you're a Temple fan, you're looking for that autonomy that uh, Aaron McKee gives his coaches to pay off. Nice drive by Jaleel White. Got to the block, able to get it to go. Two-point lead for the Owls, who continue to really battle at the defensive end. And when we talked to, to Johnny Dawkins today, you know, just kind of inherently built in your mind that any time you're going to play Temple, you know it is going to be a battle. Yes, I mean, they, they recruit tough kids. They, uh, they have tough basketball players. And they absolutely, even though they're down a few players today, they're down their head coach. You know that they're going to battle hard and try to come out of here with an American Conference victory. And so far, that defense, that strong defense that they're doing is paying off for them as UCF is struggling to find their rhythm on the offensive end. Long possessions for UCF. Mbake Jong wide open inside. Perry found him for the slam. And that was one of those things in shoot around Austin that we saw that Coach Dawkins was, was saying that could be open in this game. And now you got C.J. Walker playing at the head of the diamond on the press. Um, this is where they could really start to see if UCF sees some shots go in. They gain confidence on both ends of the floor. And if they can extend Temple here and, get, and lead him into a shot blocker like that. Jong swatted away the attempt by Jordan. Perry all the way to the cup with a left hand. You know, that's a sigh of relief for Darius Perry, finally getting a, getting a score against Temple here. Perry scoring is down significantly from the first half of the year. Johnny Dawkins emphasizing him taking better shots in order to be more productive at the offensive end. John unable to save that, so it'll stay with the Owls. Darius Perry, just change of pace, and he's finding the wide open John for the dunk. Offense leading to defense on the other end, the confidence of John with the block. Zach Hicks is on the floor for Temple, number 24, as Damian Dunn knocks down that jumper. Hicks is a player to watch. He has been red hot as a shooter the last couple of games. Hit 10 threes against Delaware State a couple of games ago. That's a school record. He had three last time out against Houston. Screen and roll with Isaiah Adams and John. That one off the front of the rim and pulled in by Dunn. Settles into a 17-footer and buries it. That's two straight pull-up jumpers for Damian Dunn. Um, that, is, that is part of his game that is really quite stellar. He likes to take those little Pump, pump fake, couple dribbles, pull up in the mid-range. There's Darren Green. Jeremiah Williams didn't contest him close enough. Green knocks down a three. UCF regains the lead. So fast on that trigger, especially coming off of his left shoulder on a screen. It is amazing how quick he gets it up. Shot clock down to six for Dunn. Down to two. And Temple doesn't get a shot away as Williams' drive is deflected. Fantastic individual defense by both Darren Green Jr. and Darius Johnson, the freshman for UCF there. Really took their man, took their assignment one-on-one -on -one and, and made sure that they weren't going to get by them. And that was one of the things that Donny, Johnny Dawkins talked about. He said, uh, you know, the, the Temple drives and kicks so well. 
that uh, if you can keep your man in front of you, you can pay dividends on the defensive end. You can't let them get the comfortable shots off. And a phrase you hear a lot for UCF is guard your yard. Something Johnny Dawkins emphasized at shoot around today. Williams drives. And in the corner, there's Dunn for three. He's got seven of Temple's 13 points. Yeah, he's somebody, if you're UCF, you really want to concentrate on. They're looking to extend their guards and push them away from the basket. And once again, got an open shot for Dunn, though. Back cut by Ty Freeman. Went for the throws for Ty Freeman coming out of the break. Yeah, Ty Freeman was somebody a few weeks ago when UCF was really struggling, especially from the outside um, in the game. That he came in off the bench and provided instant energy. He had a couple of really good uh, drives, that drives to the basket, scored a few points, and he created a charge. Um, he took a charge that was really big with about four minutes left in the, in the half. It was something that really spurred UCF into moving into the second half of that game. His efficiency has been incredible, shooting at near 70% from the field, but he was scoreless in the last two games coming into tonight. So ends that streak with a couple of free throws, and we're even at 13. There's Hicks, open look, in and out with his first three. The way he's been shooting lately, you definitely don't want to give him too many of those open looks if you're UCF. Mahan bumped by Hasir Miller in for the first time. Another of the eight freshmen on this Temple roster. Third youngest team in the country. And again, they are without arguably the best player in the American, Caliph Battle was leading the league in scoring at 21.4 points per game, fractured his foot December 1st against LaSalle. He's out for the remainder of the season. Two other players that are impact guys on this roster, Jake Forrester and Ty Strickland, unavailable tonight. Strickland nursing a back injury, did not make the trip from Philadelphia. Hopefully those guys are able to return soon and get this Temple roster to as close to as full strength as it can be. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this is this is a team that was just really uh, hit hard by COVID last year. Uh, it's a little bit different story this year with some of the injuries and some of the outages that they have. That being said, they're still struggling uh, with some of the the bad luck, especially losing um, losing their their fantastic player right you know seven games into the season. The defense on that screen and roll. Tolbert had it knocked away. And it will stay with Temple with three seconds on the shot clock. And one of the things Monte Ross talked about was that it's, it's January, but they're still trying to find offensive continuity because there has been so much turnover in the lineup. Yeah, definitely a question of chemistry, right? These players are not used to playing in the same lineup together. They've been, they've been changing up different lineups all game, or I should say all season. And so just trying to get that chemistry on the floor if you're Temple, uh, is important not only not only for the amount of lineups that they've had, but also for the youth of these players. They they they've just they're just young players, young roster in general. Darius Johnson at the free throw line for UCF. Knights defended that baseline out of bounds situation well, giving Johnson an opportunity in transition. Young freshman point guard, short on the first attempt. With this is a guy who has drawn rave reviews for his play so far. Yeah, he has. He came on really strong in that in that Michigan game a few a couple of games ago for UCF. He came in and provided big minutes, had four assists in that game, all at very crucial times. He's somebody that has a bright future at UCF, and they're going to be expecting a lot of a, an expanded role as the season goes on. He played a ton in the first meeting between these teams because of the foul trouble for Perry. Season high, 28 minutes. Yeah, you could argue that was the game that he kind of really settled into his role on this team and, and stepped up. Ty Freeman went up high for that rebound, got hit from behind by Tolbert. Foul starting to add up for the Owls. With UCF leading by one at the midway point of the first half.
White recovers defensively on Mahan. Isaiah Adams trying to split a double team. He gets bumped. That will go on Jeremiah Williams, first on the freshman from Chicago. Kind of get a feeling so far in this first half that Temple is just is, is doing what they need to to stay connected to UCF, stay in this game. They want to want to keep it, you know, they're short-handed. They want to be able to kind of keep, keep close to UCF the best they can. Jordan blocked that shot attempt by Adams. Here's White out in transition with the dunk. There you go, turning defense into offense very quickly. Something UCF does very well. Temple displaying it very well right there. Lead changes hands again in this back and forth first half. Rare mistake from Ty Freeman as he turned it over, dribbled it off his foot. Nick Jordan's skying for that block. Turns it quickly into offense, pushing it down the floor for Temple. Temple largely unaffected by UCF's pressure thus far. Anytime you're playing the night, you've got to be able to negotiate their various presses. That's right, they're, they're, their guards are able to kind of navigate through that press so far. They're settling into their half-court offense. There's a steal there. Freeman with great help and balance to be able to bank it in. And once again, Ty Freeman, as I discussed in the previous UCF Temple game, coming in off the bench, providing big minutes. Great steal there to kind of get the momentum back on UCF side. Baseline drive by Miller and it's stolen away. Perry leading the break for UCF. Great find, Adam sweeping through, lays it in. You saw it the entire way. Darius Perry had his eyes up. He was looking around for the right player to pass it to and he finds, finds his man for the easy layup. What an excellent pass there by Perry. One of the top assist men in the American. Hicks takes a two, he is 0 for three so far. Perry finds Reynolds inside. Jameel Reynolds, a couple of pump fakes, and he kicks it out. It'll be Perry for three. In and out. Wasn't a bad shot there by Perry, but he did have one extra pass. Might have got an even wide open shot for Ty Freeman. Williams turns the corner. And he had, is really skilled at getting to the rim. Both Jeremiah Williams and Damian Dunn can get to the rim and get themselves to the free throw line at a high rate. Yeah, so savvy with the basketball. That three pops in and out from Adams. UCF a one-point lead. It has been tight throughout. Williams circles inside. And they, were, they defaulted a little bit too much to one-on-one -on -one ball. He wants them to continue to share the ball and work together on offense. Three assists on seven made field goals so far tonight. Perry. Nice pullback dribble there, around and down. We talked about not defaulting to one-on-one -on -one basketball, but uh, that was within the flow of the offense. He saw his opportunity, nice crossover, and pull up for the jumper by Darius Perry. He's heating up offensively. Maybe and done in some traffic gets fouled. And it's, it's a hard balance because UCF has so many players at the guard position that are great in isolation situations, right? Yeah, and, and, Co and Coach Dawkins has been great throughout the years at giving his players a lot of confidence, giving them the green light, making sure that they are confident on the floor. So he's got to balance that with his own, uh, with his own team and the depth of talent that he has here, especially at the guard position. A foul on Darius Perry will put Damian Dunn at the line. Leads all scores in the game with seven points. Somebody that is always battling in the paint, gets on the line a ton, and shoots it at a high clip once he's there. Done a member of the all-rookie team in the American last year. And he, as we mentioned earlier, when Caleb Batter went down, there was a huge scoring void to be filled, and Dunn has certainly picked it up. He's been in double figures in eight straight games. A dependable and consistent offensive threat.
Yeah, like Caleb Battle, he's a bigger guard that has a lot of versatility in his game, especially on the offensive end. Uh, but he also gets it done, as he said, on the, on the defensive end as well, leading his team in steals. Certainly one that uh, had to step up when Battle went down. Strong first dribble from C.J. Walker. Impressive look and turnaround, and he'll be on the line. Yeah, if you're a UCF fan, you really like to see the aggressiveness of C.J. there. He wasn't forcing anything, getting into the paint, making sure he was taking a good shot, and taking the contact and almost putting that in for an and one. It's a good play by C.J. Walker there, using his size and his athleticism. Type of athleticism that made him a five-star recruit coming out of the Central Florida area. Started his career at Oregon before transferring to UCF. First ever five-star recruit in this program. Yeah, he was somebody that UCF fans coming in extremely excited about. Had a great year for, for UCF last year. Uh, mostly on the defensive end, though. Struggled to kind of find his role on the offensive end. But as we talked about, he's really been able to grow in both ends of the floor and kind of settle in on the offensive end as well. Knights a two-point lead as we come up on six minutes to go here in the first half. Dunn one-on-one -on -one with Perry. Tough shot, leaning to his right, and he gets the jumper to go. That's 11 points for once, Damian Dunn. Once again, in the mid-range, Damian Dunn shooting his shot with confidence. And Perry quickly got to the rim. Possession stays with UCF, and John gets bumped by Jordan. That'll be his second and the team's eighth. So it's a one-and-one one for Mbake John. Just got to think if you're Johnny Dawkins in UCF, it's going to continue to pay dividends to get the ball inside to C.J. Walker and Mbake to just make sure that those touches on the inside can open it up for your shooters, the, the great shooters that they have. It's good to see them continue on with that, even though they're not they're not 100% in sync uh, offensively. John Good on the front end of the one and one. UCF as a team, 78.2%. That is 15th best in the country. Yeah, leading the American, and, and Temple really saw that firsthand once UCF got up in the second half a few weeks ago. Uh, they're able to really close out teams because of their stellar uh, free throw shooting that just can't come back on a team when you're trying to foul them to stay in the game and they're knocking down every free throw they get. UCF 6 of 8 so far, and again, 18 fouls on Temple, so the Knights in the bonus for the rest of the half. Spin dribble by Dunn, lost the handle, and it will be over to UCF. Another Temple turnover, that is their seventh, and virtually all of them have come in the half court. Yeah. That was kind of wild considering the, the, the ball just kind of came off of Damian Dunn's foot, but it probably went by about four white jerseys before the before before going out of bounds. It didn't didn't touch any of them, which is wild through that traffic. But um, Temple's doing a good job of getting the ball through the press of UCF, not really letting them set it up, but just in the half court, UCF is still setting up and playing great de team defense. John got good position. He's looking for a foul call as Arashma Parks body him up. White turns the corner, and he'll be on the line. Once again, Mbake Jong just always extremely aware on the defensive end, kind of understanding not only where his own man is, and but where he needs to be on the court to stop any type of dribble penetration. Got the foul there, but he, he, he definitely stopped any type of uh, easy bucket by Khalil White. White making his third consecutive start. Missed all of last season with a meniscus tear in his left knee. Part of a season that was so challenging to Temple, not just because of COVID, but also some major injuries. 
led to a 5-11 season, lost to USF in the first round of the conference tournament. And Temple was picked to finish eighth in the league this year. I thought they were much better than that when they had Caliph Battle. They may turn out to be right at that point, even without their best player. And a program that's got a lot of potential given how young the talent is on this roster. Yeah, they certainly do, as long as they can keep this group together, which is always a question mark in college athletics nowadays. But that being said, they do have a young group, a lot of talent. They're trying to kind of figure out that chemistry together as a team. And you're right, that with their grittiness and their, and their toughness um, and their ability to just kind of hang around and stay in games, uh, a few of these kind of turn around for them. They could, they could surprise a few teams in the American. Almost did it, almost did it on Sunday evening against Houston. Lost 66-61 in that game. Two free throws for Darius Johnson. He's got three points, all of them at the line. UCF has led for most of the half, but not by more than four points. That's the largest lead either way. Shot clock down to five. Williams hoists a three. That's well off the mark. Yeah, that's not the, the kind of three-point um, shot that Temple usually wants to look for. Darren Green with the lob for Jong. Really? Fantastic find by Green. Just awesome dribble penetration there by Green, finding the open big man. Jong throws it down. Great play. You really want to just build momentum at home, and, and unfortunately with some of the issues coming out of Tulsa and that postponement of that game, they're just not able to kind of build that momentum um, with the three games that they were looking to do so at home. So now it's reduced to two. But your UCF, hopefully you can start that tonight as Isaiah Adams makes a great three. With the shot clock running down, Adams buries a triple. That's just the second for UCF. And they've got their largest lead of the game at eight. Those five points for Adams are huge. Getting him going early is great. He, he was, you know, had some great games as a freshman last year. Has kind of struggled to kind of find his spot in this rotation this year, especially on the offensive end. He's always going to provide you with that great athleticism, quickness that he has, on, and locking up, to, uh, locking up uh, players on the defensive end. He's going to give you that effort. But if you're UCF, it's good to see him knock down some shots early. It's just his fifth three of the year. Five for 21 for Isaiah Adams. Good Greeno or tune in live on the American on ESPN Plus. A wide open from the right corner. Jaleel White knocks down the three. Yeah, a lot of confusion there created by Temple's out of bounds play underneath. Wide open. Philly White. Walker a post touch. He got chested by Arashma Parks. The Temple bigs are physical, and really Temple physical at every position. One of the trademarks of this program. Yeah, not, not one of the biggest teams in the American by any means, but certainly looking to push that physicality at any chance they get. Parks is doubled inside. Another open three. Back-to-back -back triples for Jaleel White. Defensive mistakes by UCF, and Temple's back within three. Both were not only wide open, but they were a pass from underneath. Easy step into shot. Adam short, and the Owls a chance to potentially tie it up on this possession. Parks. Nice back cut. And Williams a wide open three. Towing the line off the back rim. Rebound hits. His free throw line jumper off the front of the iron. And it comes down to Darius Johnson. Walker running the floor hard. Out of bounds. It will stay with UCF. What a great find there by Ty Freeman. He's able to zip that ball down to... C.J. Walker. That's the way UCF wants to play. They want to play fast, and they get out in transition, 
They want to be able to you know, push the tempo and try to get an easy bucket. If not, they pull it out for a, a, a trailing three. That's the way UCF wants to play. They want to play 94 feet and want to play fast. Green working in traffic finds John. Made that shot tough, fading away as he let it go. Miller out in transition. Followed up and in by Sage Tolbert. Yeah, good challenge there at the rim by Darius Johnson, but Sage rebounds in those putbacks. So for UCF, you got to be aware, you got to box out, you got to keep them off the offensive glass and limit it to one possession. Darren Green got open on the wing. Off the back rim, Walker contesting that rebound, and it will stay with UCF. <laughs> See Hasir Miller making the circle gesture, indicating he wanted them he to wanted review the that. Been so common yes. now among players. Anytime, anytime they don't like a call, we want to review. I kind of, I kind of appreciate the uh, the rest of saying no, no, no. We're not looking. I saw that clearly. We're not slowing this game down. Green around a double team. Darius Johnson has to take a deep two. Jong pulls it down. And reset that to 20. So there's about a second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. UCF should be able to take the final shot of the half. Yeah, UCF needs to get a good possession here. See if they can extend this lead before the half. Especially would be good if Darren Green coming off the screen. Down to one, Darius Johnson does just, not get a shot away. Just waited way too, way too long. This is something that happens in the NBA. It happens all throughout college basketball where you have the point guard just dribbling a little bit too long in those late. Assume coach is watching, and we hope that he is back with the team soon. Hope he's feeling well. The Temple starts the second half with possession. Owls close the first half with a 7-0 run after falling behind by eight. That was the largest lead either way in the first half that had five ties and seven lead changes. Yeah, I want to give credit to Temple's defense, but these are the things that we've seen from UCF all season long where, you know, they might perform for a good stretch in the game, but then all of a sudden they, they do go cold for stretches in the game, so they, they need to get back together and uh, start knocking down some shots. Long three, no good for Jeremiah Williams. Out of bounds to UCF. Same five that started the game both ways for UCF. That's Perry, Walker, Darren Green, Brandon Mahan, and Mbake Jong. Mahan was really quiet in the first half. He only had one shot attempt. Yeah, only played a little bit over half the time in the, in the first half. Um, just kind of disappeared a little bit. Great read by C.J. Walker. He slipped the screen and hammered it home. That was just fantastic vision by C.J. Walker, using his athleticism. Great play to find him for the open, open dunk. Jordan attacking in transition. It's hit by Mbake Jong. You see Darius Perry finding C.J. Walker, showing his athleticism, showing what he's all about. Really great play by both Darius Perry and CJ on that on that particular possession. Now two free throws for Jordan, who scored the first four points of the game for Temple. Didn't score again in the first half. One of the things on that CJ Walker possession just really reminded me of the UCF coaching staff telling their players that if you set the screen hard you're uh, you're gonna you're gonna either be rewarded or your teammate is gonna be rewarded and that was no better example there on that on that great play by CJ Perry pushed out high with five on the shot clock Gonna have to put it up. Little ball fake on Dunn, and they're 
there's the three, a rainmaker from Perry. They will take a look to make sure he beat the shot clock. So as long as he did beat the shot clock, Austin, just really good awareness there by Darius Perry to understand that he could take that pump fake. As long as it worked out for him, we'll have to see the replay. Seemed like it was good from my perspective, but. Perry with time running down on the shot clock, dribbles to the left wing, uses a pump fake to get Damian Dunn to fly by. And did he get it away in time? I think he did. Wow, just a savvy play, and that's difficult to do. If you're a shooter, it's just difficult to do because you don't see any kind of partial seconds. And they do call that good. They don't, you don't see any partial seconds on the shot clock, so you, you don't know how long that one is going to really hang up there. Great play by Darius Perry there. Perry with his first three of the night. He's got seven points. UCF scores on his first couple possessions here in the second half, and they get the lead back to six. T.J. Walker guarding the point guard, Jeremiah Williams. Shows you his versatility on defense. Jordan trying to pull his way inside. Ball ends up in the hands of Parks. His shot from in close doesn't go. Perry tried a one-handed left-hand pass that came right back to him. Walker misfires on the three, and the Knights will reset. Temple has made life challenging for UCF's outstanding shooters. Another late clock. Perry, this time, unable to beat it with a three. Yeah, that time it seemed like he did lose track of how much, how many seconds were left on that shot clock. Had to take a rush three there. Didn't, didn't quite work out there for Darius Perry. Parks inside. Able to whip it to the corner, but a foul before that pass. It's on C.J. Walker, his first. Yeah, whether it's a cutting big man like Parks was there, or a dribble drive off of a high ball screen. Temple. Temple loves to try to get in the lane and kick it out to wide open shooters, and you saw it there with a quick foul. See if they can get a better possession. Dunn didn't quite have enough room to get that shot up off the inbounds pass. Yo-yo dribble on Mayhan. Right, the first time that Damian Dunn has took a questionable shot in this game. Yeah. Uh, forced that one. Yeah, once again, Bakke John just stays home, stays down, puts his hands up, just kind of deters that shot. It was a smart play defensively. Walker taps the green miss, but can't control it. Four on four for the moment. Williams got Perry on skates and had a shot spiked by John. <laughs> Talked about how he stayed down on the last play and, and avoided the foul. That time, he saw the opportunity to rise up and just bat this thing away. What a great block by Bakke. That really gets the crowd into it. It gets the entire team into it. We'll see if they can close out this defensive possession. We didn't get the full-fledged finger wag with the hand up yeah, in the air, but we got a little bit of it. It's like, it was a, a, it's like a mini Matumbo. Understated. It was an understated <laughs> wag there a mini after Matumbo. the block shot. <laughs> Freeman just shoves Jordan to the ground. It's one way to prevent the screen from happening. Already three fouls for UCF as a team. You need to be careful here. You don't want to get into too bad of foul trouble in the early in the second half. In a game where points figure to be at a premium, certainly don't want to give Temple chances at the line. Good control there by Jaleel White. He's in double figures with 10. Perry whipped it inside to Jong. Able to regain control. Freeman loses the handle. But he got away with a travel. Yeah, it looked like he took too many steps there. Oh, Perry finds Jong! Oh, with authority, Mbake Jong powers it through. Once again, Darius Perry just 
dribbling it into the foul line extended, just finding line, no look bounce pass, and then we got a steal. Again, great offense for UCF. It, it does spark their energy on defense. And the hope was that they'd be able to create some turnovers if they could speed Temple up. Darren Green's jumper is pure from the left wing. And that's something that drive to take this eight point lead going, in, uh, going into the 15 minute mark of the second half. And full court pressure out of the timeout. Dunn fouled as he got in between two UCF defenders. Not a team that I think anybody's going to want to face at yeah. the end of the season. Yeah, once again, I mean, they're a young team, but they, they certainly have the talent. And so if they can they can come together and have some continuity, uh, they're certainly a team that can that can beat anybody in the American. Just lost to Houston, a contender, top contender to win the conference by five over the weekend. Shot clock down to one as UCF went zone out of that timeout, and it forces a shot clock violation. Yeah, a lot of confusion there uh, that was created by UCF. And then the great closeout by Isaiah Adams to get a hand on that right as the shot clock was expiring. That is the type of defensive possession that UCF really prides itself on, especially coming out of a timeout like that. That's something we see the Knights do often, and it typically works really well, changing defenses out of a timeout. Yeah, uh, Dawkins is just a, a very good defensive coach. He puts a lot of emphasis on that in practice. And John going for the... That's felt like he got pushed there. It's gonna be the third foul on Mbake Jong. Next Wednesday, Knights finish out their homestand against Penny Hardaway's Memphis Tigers. Catch all the action in person or live on the American on ESPN Plus. Scheduled to be the final game of a three-game homestand, but with the game against Tulsa lost due to COVID issues with the Golden Hurricane program, it'll be a week between games for UCF. That cross-court pass, something that Temple does often, didn't quite get the... Darius Perry out of control as he went into the lane, gets whistled for an offensive foul. He is really upset as he gets up. Yeah, he, he might have been a little out of control, but the defender running with him. Uh, Damian Dunn didn't quite get his feet set, so he might have a little bit of a little bit of a uh, argument here, but he did get his feet outside of that, outside of that crease. And, and Darius Perry did come in. Just a little bit too aggressive. And I think what, what you're looking for and, and what the officials are looking for, by the time Perry initiates his move, is the defender in a legal guarding position? Close, but I think based on that replay, it did not look like Dunn was in a legal guarding position. Yeah, it just, it just didn't quite. It almost looked like he kind of went underneath him as he was coming in. So, he, like I said, certainly has an argument there. I'm, I'm kind of glad that cooler heads prevailed. There was no technical call or anything like that. Kind of controlled their reaction to it. Physical drive by Darius Perry. And at the other end, there's Dunn, along with the three. Jameel Reynolds, who just checked in, has the rebound for UCF. Isaiah Adams, Ty Freeman, Jameel Reynolds, players off the bench right now out there for UCF along with Perry and Darren Green. Perry splits a pair of defenders, and as you might expect, a quick whistle in favor of UCF on that drive. First on Damian Dunn, UCF has committed 16 fouls, so Temple is in the bonus for the remainder of the game. Yeah, and that was only the first team foul for Temple, so great help. Upside on that end. Great help by Jaleel White, and how about the Euro step from Jeremiah Williams? Really pulls that thing through. Kind of waited for Big Jamil Reynolds to clear. Nice finish there by Jeremiah Williams. Williams, a freshman from Chicago, played at Simeon High School, which has four alums currently in the NBA. Jamil Reynolds got position. Those are two guys that came into UCF together. Isaiah Adams and Jameel Reynolds. Great seal off there. What a great pass. Great find by Isaiah Adams to find his 
Big man for the dunk. Lazy pass from Hicks leads to a turnover. And a Darius Perry three. That's one of those shots. A little bit of a feel shot from Darius Perry. A little bit of a heat check, because if it doesn't go in, it may not be a great shot in the beginning of the possession there, but you're a UCF fan, you're certainly glad that that one went in. UCF has made four in a row to extend the lead to 11. Dunn flipped it up after going in between defenders. Another chance for the Knights in transition. Ty Freeman passed up what would have been a wide open three. Perry won't do the same thing. Last touch by Dunn, so it'll stay with UCF. Let's see here, Isaiah Adams finding Jamil Reynolds for that great seal off dunk, and then the kick out, one step hesitation there for Darius Perry. UCF has it rolling right now. Reynolds dominating Ooh. Jordan inside, lost his balance and turned it over. Yeah, he was thinking he was gonna get the foul there. Hicks settles into a three. He has yet to find his stroke from three-point range, but there's Jaleel White. Got the rebound in the corner, and there was no one at the rim. Like a red carpet opened up for him. Jaleel, Jaleel White's having himself a game. He's really been in the right positions on the floor. He's taking advantage of, the, of what the defense has given him. And his hustle is really getting him the, the points that he needs. Good defense by... They need to take advantage of all, of not only the game tonight, but all four of those games coming up to um, really establish themselves in the American. Tough shot by Perry, pulled down by Jaleel White, who has a season high 14 points. Fantastic night for the freshman from Whitesboro, New Jersey. It's the second time he's been in double figures this season. Williams draws two defenders. And Asir Miller had a foot on the sideline in the corner. Yeah, Asir, Asir Miller had some good minutes um, against Houston on Sunday, but just hasn't quite gotten into the game too much uh, tonight. And unfortunately, had a turnover there as soon as he got back in. Miller from Philadelphia. He was the Class 4A State Player of the Year last year in Pennsylvania. One of the true freshmen on this Temple roster. Draws the assignment on Darius Perry right now. Ty Freeman looking for space. Here's Reynolds, who's been productive in the post. Just lowers a shoulder right into Sage Tolbert, who gets whistled for the foul. Yeah, especially with the size of Jamil Reynolds. Needs to be a little careful there the way he's you know, once he catches the ball, he just needs to make sure that he needs to know that the defender is not going to be able to necessarily stop them, but they are going to be trying to draw that charge. So he's got to be careful on lowering that shoulder. UCF is led by as many as 11. Right now the margin is nine. Reynolds, quick spin to the baseline. Walled up there by Tolbert. Good job, Reynolds stays with it, but unable to get the shot to go. Yeah, yeah, showed some pretty good patience and effort there. Just couldn't quite get it to go. Underneath alone inside is White. Adds to a career high. Yeah, and that's where UCF really needs to clean up some of their, de of their transition defense to make sure they can find those open guys. Perry absorbed the bump. He was looking for a foul call as that one bounced around and down. Now 12 points for Darius Perry. He's in double figures after couple of substandard offensive games for him. And again, he didn't score the last time these teams met three weeks ago in Philly. Nice drive. Jeremiah Williams with a chance for a three-point play. It's something they like to do. They like to take that high ball screen or even a double screen, come off it strong. If they don't see an opening, they, they like to kick out to wide open shooters. But that time, Jeremiah Williams really saw his opening, saw the opportunity to take it up strong. Took it for the chance for the M1. The one free throw for Jeremiah Williams, who has been a warrior, like 30 or more minutes in six straight games. And Monte Ross talked about how you know, he could be a true point guard. We need him to score more because of the injuries. 
And they put a lot on him. He typically guards the other team's best player, so he really has to work at both ends. Yeah, when you lose 21 points from Caleb Battle, you got to find the points from somewhere, and coaching staff at Temple is really looking for that out of uh, Jeremiah Williams along with Damian Dunn, of course. Crafty inside-out dribble there from Ty Freeman to get free. UCF has been able to keep Temple at arm's length here in the second half. One point game at the half. Knights quickly built it up. Temple playing from behind. Finally, there's a three for Zach Hicks. First three of the game for Hicks, who'd missed his first six shots. And once again, got that three off the dribble penetration and the kick out. Oh. Jong rebounds the green miss. And a late whistle from the baseline will be a foul against UCF. And body's getting tangled up down there. The foul is on Mbake Jong. It's his fourth. And it is a one and one for Temple. Chance for the Owls to get closer. And this is really how Temple stayed in the game when it was UCF at Temple a few weeks ago. Is really got UCF into foul trouble. Some of their key players. Last time it was Perry. This time we're seeing Mbake. John also found either. out of that game in Philly. Uh, there you go. Yeah, so, so both players now. We've seen a lot, a lot bigger game uh, from Perry this time, trying to stay out of foul trouble. And unfortunately, Bakke just goes to the bench with his fourth foul. Number zero, Darius Johnson going to come on and give Perry a blow. One more free throw for Jaleel White. Already a career high. He's got 17 on seven of nine from the floor. Missed all of last season with a meniscus tear. Averaging just less than five points per game this year, but he has had himself a night here in Orlando. Good, quick, aggressive move in the post there by C.J. Walker, and he'll be at the line. Yeah, talking about Jaleel White, I mean, this is what Johnny Dawkins talked with us about uh, this afternoon in shoot-around, how when you, when you play against a team that has a lot of young players, you just, you know that from your own experience that you just haven't seen what they can really provide in a, in a, in a full scope. So that's what we're seeing from Jaleel White today. It's just a breakout game from a freshman um, that we haven't really seen before. I guarantee you he wasn't fully, you know, high up on the, on the scouting report for UCF. So he surprised them today. And two straight misses from C.J. Walker. 73% at the line this year. Temple's making a little bit of a run here. UCF has to be careful. Owls have hit four straight shots. Williams finds Tolbert off the screen. Um, on that uh, screen. So really the help side defense can help uh, prevent either the dribble drive or or if it's a pick and roll where he gets extended out. Try to slow that action down. And Tolbert hits both. It's a one possession game. Mahan has been quiet offensively. Three no good from the top of the key. Temple can tie or take the lead with a three. Williams asks for space on Green. It'll be Hicks for the lead. Off the front rim. And last touch. Darius Perry back on for the Knights. Here we go, defense! Dunn looking for the ball in the post. Avoided that turned over. And it's out of bounds to UCF. And Darius Perry with a good deflection there. He kind of stayed with it, trying to get the ball, and Damian Dunn wound up slipping, causing the turnover. Thirteenth turnover committed by Temple. UCF just two for their last ten offensively. Mayhan momentarily lost his footing as he attacked the lane. 
Perry looking for room, and Isaiah Adams gets called for an illegal screen. Third offensive foul of the half committed by UCF. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. You saw Isaiah Adams actually saw the opportunity to create some separation for his teammate Darren Green. And I, I just think he was a little bit too overzealous and maybe the because he was he was trying to motion to uh, Darius Perry to try to get that ball to Darren Green. I think he was I think his excitement kind of caused the attention of the uh, a referee to call him for that illegal screen. Just eight turnovers for UCF, and the Knights have done a better job of taking care of the ball the last several games. That was a priority for Johnny Dawkins going into the break. Williams working on Walker. Gets a step. Tough finish by Jeremiah Williams. He flexes as he goes down to the other end of the floor, and we are tied at 48. Wow, that is a big bucket by Jeremiah Williams over the outstretched arms of C.J. Walker. Just a savvy play by the by the young player. Jaleel White trying to get through the screen of Adams, pushes him. That'll be the fourth team foul on Temple. Owls are already in the double bonus. Yeah, sees that opening, just kind of takes a little bit of contact and and it finished up over the outstretched arms of CJ. That was a heck of a play. Adams gets some space, can't spin it home, and Temple will have a chance for the lead. And once again, that possession by Isaiah Adams, it's a little bit too one-on-one -on -one ball for UCF. This is something that... Hits for three, and he's fouled! A potential four-point play for Zach Hicks. And Temple has its first lead since the opening minutes of the game. Everything is going right for Temple right now. Little, little uh, shovel pass from Damian Dunn just kind of creates that separation or confusion for the defenders for Zach Hicks. Just enough of the window for him to pull up and make that shot. Takes the contact, too, for the four-point play. It's a 12-0 Temple run. And the Owls have flown into the lead, 52-48 here in Orlando. With the amount of veterans on this team, Dawkins doesn't want to call a timeout here. He just wants to run, the, run their offense, run a good play. Williams right there on the catch by Green. UCF desperately needs a good possession here on offense. Mayhan step back. In and out. Jong rebounds the miss, and he's fouled by Tolbert. That'll be the fourth foul on Sage Tolbert. Yeah, that's certainly a shot that Brandon Mayhan has made um, throughout the season. It kind of felt like with the shot clock coming down a little bit, it kind of felt like he had to make that take that step back. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. UCF just two for their last 13. January 16th, UCF women's basketball team back in action here at Edition Financial Arena against in-state rival South Florida. The war on I-4 in women's hoops. Join us in person or catch all the action on ESPNU. Bucket by Jong makes it a two-point game with five and a half to go. Williams. The teardrop and the freshman from Chicago is taking over for Temple. Yeah, they had a switch on a big man there. He had Mbake on him, he had the bigger guy on him. Ooh. Mayhan with the lob and the Skywalker comes from out of the clouds to throw it down. That was a great answer by UCF, kind of a quick score to negate what just happened on the defensive end. UCF has been in this position before, tight games at home, and they have thrived. Games against North Alabama and Jacksonville in the early part of the year, but a much different caliber of opponent tonight. Green, nice bounce pass to Jong, brought it down in traffic, and he was falling down, bailed out by the whistle. Yeah, it couldn't quite. Didn't quite get a hand on that great bounce pass there. But Brandon Mayhan, with a great pass, alley -oop to C.J. Walker and slams it down. Let's go. 
Aaron Green, the floater inside. Mayhem the rebound. Perry lets it go. Green a rebound and another chance for UCF. Great work on the offensive glass for UCF trying to keep this possession alive. They really need to score here. Perry tries to turn the corner on Jordan. Tough finish. Darius Perry right into the chest of Jordan and got it to go off the glass. Great body control there by Darius Perry, taking it up and over the taller defender. Williams has had the hot hand for Temple. Dunn shovels it inside. Jordan got free and banked it in. Again, uh, Jordan got a little bit of loss there in the uh, from the UCF defense. Just got a little complacent. Damian Dunn found him. Temple's hit seven of their last nine from the field. Three and a half to go. Two-point lead for the Owls. Perry rising from behind the backboard on the baseline, not even close. Another possession, a lot of one-on-one -on -one going on from UCF. Damian Dunn's been rather quiet in this half from a scoring perspective, but he has been distributing the ball pretty well. Williams to the corner, there's Dunn. Past what would have been a three. Yeah, good close out there by Green to make sure he wasn't going to make that shot. Williams cutting down the lane. What a hack for freshman Jeremiah Williams. And once again, Damian Dunn, he, he, he's in the paint. White has really got it done on the offensive end tonight, and Temple's really needed it, and, and that's what's resulted in the four-point lead they have right now. Mahan attacks. Has his shot rejected by White. See, I don't mind that. Uh, by Brandon Mahan, he's trying to he's trying to create something, and especially trying to get to the basket is never a bad thing, especially if you can draw the foul or or, or even score over your opponent. Darius Perry looking for a little bit more room on the inbounds pass. Quick one into Walker. Mahan for three. What a time for his first made shot of the night. The three for Brandon Mahan makes it a one-point game. Yeah, it really doesn't matter what's going on in the game. He, he just has a lot of poise and a lot of confidence in his own ability. Knocking down that shot when UCF really needed it. Dunn, low crossover on Mahan, forcing his way inside. Great defense by the Knights. And Jong comes away with it. He's fouled, and he'll have a chance at the line to put UCF in front. And Austin, that is just a fantastic defensive play by Mbappe Jong. He's got four fouls. He's one away from doing the exact same result as what happened a few weeks ago at Temple. And he stays home. He goes straight up. He makes sure that he stops that that ball, and not only that, makes sure he gets the ball and uh, causes the foul, and he's he's on the other end for a chance to add add to their score. So one and one for Jong. Two for two tonight. Jong is 77 percent on the year. Good looking stroke. From the 6'11 redshirt senior from Senegal. Yeah, he does a lot of things for this team that don't always show up, you know, eye-popping stats. But he's always in the right position, especially on defense. And he provides a lot of, a lot of stability on the offensive end as well. He's matched his season high with 12 points. Knights have the lead. Five in a row for UCF to go back in front. It's Hicks from the wing. No good. Rebound by Walker. Once again, Temple and Hicks, they get a good look. Hicks wasn't able to knock that down. Mayhan pulls it back. Another three. Mayhan is money. And the Knights have scored eight in a row. 
That's what Mayhem could do. Depth of talent that they have that, that, that really pays off dividends in these late game situations where they can remain poised. And UCF goes zone out of the timeout. Jordan at the free throw line. Off the back rim, the tip doesn't go, and Walker comes away with it with under a minute to go. Another huge man-sized rebound there for C.J. Walker. Dunn guards Perry. Shot clock down to five. Walker, deep two. And rebounded by Williams. Temple will look to push. Williams on the baseline, sets up Hicks. The three is good. 90 feet away from the basket, which tends to happen sometimes with UCF against the press. Mahan is doubled. Steps through that double team. Good step through there. Looks like Freeman he was a little bit in trouble. Is UCF trailed. Went on an 8-0 run to take the lead, but now Temple a chance to close it out and upset the Knights. Williams off the kick. It's done for three. He's as quick as possible, and, and the flaring out of Brandon Mahan and Darren Green. Freeman gets it into Perry. He's got some space. Perry dribbles it out of bounds. He's on the line with two pressure free throws. Try to ice it. First one's good. So if he makes this one, four-point game. If he misses, UCF rebounds and heaves, hoping for a miracle. It's good. Damian Dunn drives a stake through UCF's heart.